Ikaru Nakamura recently won the Fisher Random World Championship, and this is him with his trophy. Now, this is supposed to be Icelandic lava. Now, listen, I don't want to impugn or besmirch the character of Icelandic lava. I'm sure it's the best lava in the world, but that doesn't look like lava to me. I'll let you make your own decision. The game itself, as you know, Fisher Random, they change the back row of pieces. They move the pieces around from the normal starting position. Fisher came up with this idea because he thought opening theory was ruining the game. That was 50 years ago. We know now that that's sort of ridiculous, but people still play this. And uh, Wesley So was the Fisher World Champion, Fisher Random World Champion. In this game, Hikaru plays Magnus Carlsen. And uh, this is a victory from Hikaru, and this is really the game that put him over the top. This wasn't the last game that he played, but beating Carlson in this game was, was really the key to Hikaru becoming the new Fisher Random World Champion. Let's take a look. Obviously, this is new to me, too, so I'll analyze this as best as I can. Uh, Magnus has white, Hikaru has black. Magnus begins with b4, which allows his queen to aim at the center. The d5, g3, c6. So you'll notice both sides sort of play, they're trying to get back to known positions. Uh, this is like a Slav defense. Uh, Carlson plays bishop to g2. I'm not exactly sure why, just putting the bishop on a place, I guess he's more comfortable. Uh, knight f6, a4 gaining space. g6, knight f3. Hikaru plays knight to a6, attacking the b4 pawn. Bishop to a3 defends it, knight to e4 reveals the bishop against Carlson's queen, but the queen moves out of the way. Naka plays the knight to d6. It might be able to jump into c4 at some point later. Carlson stops that immediately with d3. And now both sides castle. There are specific rules for castling. I don't even pretend to understand them, but you can see now here both sides have castled their kings, and it is Hikaru's move with the black pieces. He plays b5. Uh, queen to b3 to protect the a4 pawn. Pawn takes, queen takes a4. Now queen to b7 from Hikaru to get the queen out of the corner. Uh, c3, bishop to d7, threatening c5, and in a reveal against the queen at a4, so the queen moves back to c2. Hikaru plays rook to c8. He'd love to play c5 and open up this rook against the queen at c2. d4 sort of blocks that all up. It neutralizes the bishop. It keeps c5 from being played but it does create a bit of a weak square here at b5. Knight to c7, Hikaru immediately begins to try to take advantage of these two weak light squares at b4 and c, b5 and c4. Knight b to d2, knight c to b5, hits the bishop so it moves. Hikaru plays bishop to f5, hitting the queen, queen to b3, and now Hikaru plays a5. He wants to liquidate this a pawn as a weakness, however, he needs to be confident that he's going to be able to capture it back, and that actually ends up becoming a problem here. Pawn takes... Queen to c7, attacking the pawn. Queen to a4, rook to a8, and rook to a1. Well, for the moment, uh, Carlson is actually protecting this extra pawn rather effectively. So Hikaru is going to have to come up with counterplay to deal with that. He moves the rook to the b file, indirectly threatening this bishop at b2. Rook f to c1, knight to e4, hits the c3 pawn. The knights are exchanged, and uh, it looks like that Carlson has successfully kept his pawn and uh, has the edge in this game up to this point. Knight to d2, these bishops get traded, and now c5. So it looks like Hikaru is trying to soften up this diagonal to activate this bishop on h8. However, after rook to c2, he decides to go ahead and play c4, and he uses it to gain space on the queen side. However, he sort of deadens his bishop at h8 a little bit. It's now going to be a little bit harder to activate that piece. Knight goes to f3, and here Hikaru plays knight to a7. Again, probably an error. Perhaps best computers like rook to a6, blockading that pawn and just kind of going after it immediately. Uh, and here, knight to a7 was played, and the best move for Carlson would have been bishop to c1, with the idea of immediately moving to f4 and skewering the queen and the rook. Uh, but instead, he plays the bishop to a3. That's sort of his advantage, in addition to this pawn, is that Carlson has a bishop on an effective diagonal, and Hikaru does not. Uh, e5 is played. Again, probably the black's best here was knight to c6. After advancing the pawn, rook to b6, 
and then basically trading off and getting a two rooks against a queen. The two rooks are better here because the queen doesn't have active targets, but this was probably uh, Hikaru's best idea in that particular position. Instead, he plays the move e5. Again, now, again, trying to extend this bishop's diagonal and attacking in the center. Pawn takes, bishop takes, and now the knight just goes ahead and takes the bishop. The queen takes e5, bishop to c5, rook to b3, and a6. Now, it's spot the tactic time. <laughs> you know, when you're out of your normal world of, of opening theory, it can affect your game, the middle game, and the end game. And here Carlson has made uh, quite a basic blunder. And Hikaru takes advantage of it with this move. Queen to e4 check. And that's a double attack. It hits the king. It hits the rook at c2. King g1, queen c2. And now Hikaru has a decisive material advantage. Uh, Carlson does play on, however, for a little bit. Queen to d7, rook to b1 check. When you're, when you're up a rook, you want to get pieces off the board. You want to exchange pieces. Rook d1, queen b1 check, king to g2, queen to b5, again, offering the exchange of queens. Uh, that's what he wants. But queen to b7, a, a strong move. Queen takes, pawn takes, and now, at the very least, he does get a minor piece back. Rook takes pawn. So here, it's just an exchange up, not a whole rook. Um, however, the pawns are even, and in an endgame like this, eventually this rook is just going to clearly win. But Magnus plays on for a while. Bishop d4, king f8, g4, king to e7, g5. This is a very instructive concept. He wants to have this one pawn sort of hold all three of these black pawns, black advances he get, he would take. So you have this one pawn fixing these three pawns in place. Akaro's material advantage is just too much, though. King e6, f3, rook to b1, e3, king to d6, king to g3, king to c6, king to f4, rook f1, h4, and king to b5. And in this position, recognizing the futility of his position, Magnus Carlsen resigned. And uh, this was the key game that made Ikaro Nakamura the world champion of Fisher Random Chess. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again soon.